Good afternoon. My name is Sister Louise Charbonneau. I'm a Sister of Charity of Ottawa, and I'm speaking to you today from the Mother House of the Sisters of Charity here in Ottawa. The Sisters of Charity were founded by Elizabeth Briere almost 175 years ago, on the 20th of February, 1845. Elizabeth responded to an invitation that was sent to the Grey uh, Sisters of Montreal to come and assist the Oblates here in Ottawa. The Ottawa area, which was called Bytown in those days, uh, was very much in need of social services such as health care, orphanages, care for the elderly. And so Elizabeth responded to that invitation. When the congregation was still very young, having been founded in 1845, the typhus epidemic uh, was, uh, in full, was in full outbreak and the Great Sisters of Montreal were asked to provide services to the thousands of immigrants that were coming from Ireland. And so the young congregation in Ottawa was pleased to accept the invitation. However, Elizabeth Briere in her compassion and her courage still experienced a, a little bit of, of fear about how she was going to provide these services. She wanted to be brave and with Mother McMullen uh, being the person who had asked her and she was very respectful of Mother McMullen's wishes and her wishes on the congregation as it was founded in Ottawa, wanted to uh, respond to the invitation but was a little bit fearful because the congregation was still young and the numbers were still very small. And so in uh, February, when the invitation did come to the congregation in Ottawa, Mother Briere accepted. And then when the first group of immigrants arrived in June 1847, Mother Briere started to feel the fear that she had been experiencing over the months anticipating the arrival of the immigrants. And she wanted to be the generous, compassionate uh, missionary that uh, she knew she was called to be in Bytown, but she was afraid of this contagious disease that the, uh, the immigrants were bearing. However, the sisters and the novices at the time showed courage and they were valiant in their effort to provide services, shared their, their beds, their rooms, and the sisters were able to respond to the needs of the population. However, the, the um, this, luckily, the sisters uh, were not affected by the illness in terms of deaths. A few sisters did contract the illness, but there were no deaths among the sisters. Um, many of the sisters were involved in providing care, uh, such as Sister Rodriguez, who was a pharmacist and who provided medication to the, to the immigrants in their care. So the young congregation, even though the numbers were small, were able to pursue their mission of compassion, the charism of compassion that they had brought from Montreal and that Mother Briere was trying so valiantly to instill in Bytown, which was a rather rough environment at that, at that time. And when we reread Mother Briere's letters to Mother McMullen, and there are many, you see that Mother Briere wanted to be faithful to Mother McMullen's uh, wishes and her vision of the congregation and frequently invited her to come to Bytown. However, that was to, to come a few years later, but the relationship was one of great confidence and one of great respect between Mother Briere and Mother McMullen. And the uh, confidence, the respect was put to a test during the typhus epidemic in 1847. I think Mother Briere can be, in retrospect, be very proud of the way she provided services to the Irish immigrants during the typhus epidemic in 1847.